and I will. There we are. We're live on the internet. Let, let's uh, start some music and do a podcast. Here we go. Oh, thank you so much for joining us live on a Thursday evening. It's possibly very stormy where you are. Doesn't matter what time you listen to this. I bet there's a storm nearby. And welcome to Caching in the Northwest. You know, this is the only podcast from the birthplace of geocaching in the great Pacific Northwest. Each week, we're going to talk about caches and cachers from here and all around the globe. So while you're busy picking up the needles from the Christmas tree, we'll be caching in the Northwest. That's right. And that means it's time to bring in our merry macaque. Some say he started a GoFundMe page to change Wednesday to Earth Cache Day. Others say he discovered the most intelligent dinosaur, the Saurus. All we know is he's called Land Monkey. Yes. So just to evaluate how intelligent I am, it took me a few moments to actually get that last joke. Um, <laughs> the Saurus. Got it. Okay. All right, big sigh. Um, yeah, so um, every Wednesday is now officially Earth Cache Day, so that's great. I'm looking forward to my icons, um, <laughs> my souvenirs. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, thank you, guys. Great to be here with you. I, it feels like just a couple of days since we were all together. Yeah, oddly enough. Yeah, that's awesome. It was so much fun in Victoria, and we'll talk about that more in the after show, but what a great time uh, to be together. So thankful for everybody who was able to make it out through the stormy boat rides to to join us um it was fantastic and i'm also joined tonight we are joined tonight by uh gear guru and miss jen from hq hi guys good evening hello thanks for that let's be here it is our absolute pleasure to have you guys on the show we are really excited about the topic tonight but before we get into that, a quick reminder that we do appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week. And if you want to know more about supporting the show, click that Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. And as we are wont to do every Thursday evening, it's time for the geocaching log of the week, or what we like to say is glow. Whether you wrote it or whether you read it, we want to hear about it because great logs simply make geocaching better. Send an email to feedback at cachingnw.com. You can call in to 253-693-TFTC, or you can use a voicemail tool on the website and show us how you glow. That's right. And this week's glow, it's a, it's a recent one, and it's a short one, but it's a good one. Sent in by Kev MacD, who we hung out with recently. And he said, uh, let's see, the, the glow was from GC7ZYNF. He said, I came over to Vancouver Island for the Christmas in the Northwest event. I remember that one. That was good. And he stayed for the Geo Tour. Nice. So his log reads, definitely amazing places. I've been to Nanaimo a few times before and visited some of them, but seeing all of them in this tour in a short period was breathtaking. A day that went from damp to sunny to torrents of rain to an amazingly bumpy and wobbly ferry ride home. Mount Aerosmith Biosphere Region 8 was the altitude buster, right from the parking lot upwards. It's a fun, easy find, good coordinates. Make sure to include the sign in either the up or the down journey and bring a crayon for the rubbings. Oh, cool. So thanks for that, Kev MacD. And when you, dear listener, go do that geo tour, it'll all make sense. Not only <laughs> that, but... Uh, <laughs> If you, dear listener, are checking out that log, make sure to upvote it because I think that is a helpful log. It is. Yes, there you go. And you can upvote logs in Canada and Finland, correct? Norway. Norway. Almost Norway. correct. Eh, it was close. You know, from my perspective, they're very near each other. Now, if you're there, people say, well, it's completely different. But Well, think about it this way. Norway would be in the northwest of that region. Oh, 
I'm liking Norway even more. <laughs> it's got NW that, right in the name. I was going to say, is it capital N, capital W in Norway? It would be if you wrote it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, folks, if you want to include some interesting topic for the after show, please use hashtag FATAS right there in the chat, and we'll get to it in, well, oddly enough, the after show. Right now, we have feedback from Bullcasher. He says, I'm late in listening to your Thanksgiving episode with Keats94. And I just wanted to say that I had, I have had darn tough socks for several years now. And I wear a pair of them just about every day. And he's talking about the brand, not that he just yeah. happened to get some socks that were, <laughs> were tough. Uh, he goes on, I've collected four pairs over the years, and whenever a pair wears out, I send it in, and they send back the same pair if in stock, and a similar pair if not. I sent back two pair a few months ago and got them back after about three weeks. Great company, great socks. Wow. Thanks for your show. Cash safely. No, cash often and cash safely. I read that only one way. Sorry there. <laughs> it was hard to turn those around. It is, right? Oh, that's awesome. The so monkey brainwashing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to hear from Bull Casher, a great local casher up here in the Metro Van area. Um, I know Keats had talked about that, their return policy on those darn tough socks. I didn't, but I didn't, I guess it didn't sink in until reading. They're guaranteed for life. Yeah. That you can actually do that with socks? That's crazy, that is isn't crazy. it? I'm going to go add them to my Amazon wish list. No kidding, right? This podcast is over. So yeah. all you need is one pair. Apparently. Well, no, yeah. you have to have a pair to wear while the other pair is two pairs. Back. Yeah. yeah, see? There you go. <laughs> and, you know, they're wool socks. So wool socks breathe better. So you can wear them multiple days in a row if you need to. Now they're wool. And are they merino wool? Let's go with yes. Okay. I can't remember. We'll have to ask I can't Keith. remember either. Keith, if you're listening, let us know. Oh, go back and listen to that episode again. But they are darn tough. That's Hold on. Either. I'm going to go back and listen to that. No, not episode. you. I'm talking about the listener who's driving on the freeway right now. <laughs> Three weeks from now. Okay. In the storm. In the storm. They're, maybe they're well, stopped. This storm is never going to end. Is that why? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to end the storm, and I'm going to move on to talk about geotours. Because tonight, we've got two very special guests. As Len Monkey introduced, we've got Jen and Jeff from HQ. So welcome to Caching the Northwest. Hi, everybody. Thanks for inviting us on the show. We're excited to talk about this. Yes, we are excited to talk about geotours. Awesome. So are we. We love the geotours. So before we get into the geotours themselves, maybe you guys could uh, take a few moments, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourselves, um, what you do at HQ, and what's your favorite part about being a, a lackey? There's this mystery about being a lackey. So let us know what you think. So I'll go ahead and start. I started, created my first account back in 2005, logged my first geocache in 2009, um, got hooked shortly after that, and I've been a, a rabid geocacher ever since. Uh, I love going out and doing it. Um, so my lackey job, I work in the geotours end of the business, and my job is sales. I'm supposed to go out and sign new geotours, find potential uh, prospects, and convince them that a geotour is the best option for them. Um, being a lackey is, is awesome. Um, I love participating and helping to create the game that I enjoy so much. Uh, the other best part about being a lackey is having lackey tags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you're not a vending machine, as Chris always says. I, That's right. I am not. You gotta do something special for them. I just don't just hand them out willy nilly. Nice. I, uh, I think I've, I, I have it in my coat pocket. Because I just registered it this week, you know, with the, uh, you, you might be a geocacher if trackable part. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I just registered your lackey tag this week. Cool. I was like, I've got it here somewhere. I know I've just seen it. No, it's, it's in my <laughs> coat pocket. Miss Jen. Yeah. So, um, my username is, you know, pretty easy to figure out with my real name. So, uh, I've been Miss Jen in the geocaching world since 2001, and I've been a lackey, uh, lackey for about 12 years, dozen years, 
And the most important thing about me this evening is that I am wearing a pair of darn tough socks. <laughs> I, I absolutely love them. That is an unsolicited recommendation. I didn't realize we would be talking about that tonight. But yeah, I'm wearing a pair that uh, I've had for a super long time. They really do last. Um, but on a more related note. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is proud to be product right. sponsored by Darn Tough. Yeah. <laughs> yes, unsolicited, unsolicited. Um, you know, there's a lot to love about being a lackey. I clearly, like Jeff, I started as a player and, you know, I've had the the pleasure of, of turning that game into, into my living. And um, a lot of your listeners may not realize the official vision of Geocaching HQ. Our vision is to make everyone an explorer and, you know, have an adventure at every location. That's what success will look like for us. And that's a pretty awesome definition of success. It's pretty great that that's the goal of our jobs, you know, regardless of which lackey you're talking to. Nice. Now, I don't know how it's possible, but it may be possible. There's somebody listening to the podcast that hasn't had an opportunity to participate in a geo tour. How would you describe a geo tour to somebody who hasn't done one yet? A great place to start. Basically a geo tour is a collection of geocaches that helps you get to know that destination really well. These are curated sets of caches and frequently they are put together by the local um, tourism organization. Um, we were talking about Mount Aerosmith Biosphere Reserve earlier in the GLOW and they're not a tourism organization, they're more an environmental organization uh, bringing people to these amazing places, literally. And so they have picked out these special locations. Um, we have curated sets of these all around the world. Sometimes they're organized by a park system. Sometimes they're organized by local geocachers even. And uh, they, they're they not just sort of a random set of geocachers. They usually have a nice theme that keeps them together. So it's a great way to up-level your next vacation if you have a couple of days to spend somewhere. Cool. I like that. Up-level. Up-level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if this anonymous geocacher now says that sounds like a really fun thing and I want to get involved and go do a geo tour, yeah. how, how do they find one? Is it just, is there a special section to click a geo tour.com or something or. Sure. So you go to, you know, geocaching website and on the home page, there's going to be a play button, click the play button and there's drop down menu for geo tours. And you click on that geo tours option. It'll bring up a web page for geo tours. It will show you any featured geotours, which are geotours that have paid a little extra to be promoted on the top of the page. And then the rest of them are all sorted based on distance from where you're located. So you're going to see the closest ones to you. And then the farthest ones up uh, away from you are going to be at the bottom of the page. And then if you're not on web and you're on a mobile app, of course, there's a special section on the official geocaching app. And... Uh, again, like Jeff just said, it'll show up in the order based on your destined, uh, based on your location, closest to farthest. And on the mobile app, you can also sort in a different way. You can sort by um, GT code, I think, and uh, alphabetically. There's a couple of ways to sort. Yeah, so you know, gives you a couple options if you're on a mobile device. Awesome. That's. A really good explanation of, of how to do that. Thank you, guys. That's great. Um, so yeah, there you go. You can go on the website. You can use the mobile app. Uh, and that's and it was true. When that came out, well, obviously, it's true. You just said it. But when it came out on the mobile app, I thought, oh, that's pretty handy because it it's like, has its own little section in there. Yeah. Uh, kind of sped it up a little bit, which is kind of neat. Smart thinking there. Yeah, the special section on the app helps you focus just on those GeoTour caches we all get distracted by all the other geocaches in the world. But if you just wanted to concentrate, that portion of the app helps you not, uh, it basically, it shows you just the ones that are in this curated set and you can keep track of what you found, what you're still missing and stay focused and win the prize. Don't get distracted now. <laughs> <Squirrel>. <laughs> That's awesome. 
So, uh, guys, I have a question for you. What are some of your favorite geo tours, and and what makes them stand out for you? What makes them great? So, for me, I'd have to say my favorite geo tour was the Captain John Smith geo tour. Um, it was put on by the National Park Service. Um, it was the first geo tour that I had did had done and accomplished. And I was there for the kickoff event. So it was a really great chance to meet a lot of the local cachers, meet some of the folks that hid the caches. Um, it's definitely a historical geo tour. It takes you around to all the places that Captain John Smith traveled when he was first exploring that Chesapeake Bay region. And I'm, I'm a big fan of history. I like finding those out of the way, cool gems, little pieces of history that I would not have found out about without geocaching. Um, so it was great. It was really Really fun geo tour. I was not able to accomplish it all because it does require some paddling, but it was a great experience to get out there and explore those places. I am thinking about my favorites. You know, in in a way, they're kind of all my favorites. You know, <laughs> are you asking you to choose your favorite child? Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm I'm torn between kind of two answers. One of them is that my favorite geo tour is the one I'm working on right now with Kelly, uh, our other colleague in the office. You know, I'm, I'm super excited about it because I'm actively working with the hosts and preparing. But, you know, at this point, I'm not at liberty to reveal that destination. And it's for us geocachers who were pretty sensitive to locations around the world. This is a really cool location. So I'm excited about that detail. Um, Maybe you can invite us back to your show once that tour launches and I can tell you more about it. Um, it's really cool. Is it the Antarctic Geo Tour? Ooh, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Maybe it's the Arctic Geo Tour. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. They're both really chill. Yeah. Um, speaking of kind of far flung places, the 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 other one I was thinking of as a favorite is is the farthest away geo tour that I've had the opportunity to experience, and that's Porvu, Finland. Uh, and a little bit like what Jeff said, you know, this geo tour took me to a place that I honestly would never have gone to if not for geocaching, if not for that geo tour. Maybe I would have gone to Finland, maybe I would have gone to Helsinki, but I doubt that I would have gone to this small town, which is just about an hour outside of Helsinki. Um, and we ended up spending a gorgeous weekend there in July where the sun never sets. And um, there's this beautiful boat ride that you can take from Helsinki to Porvu. You don't even have to drive. It was an amazing experience. Wow. That's awesome. I, I have been to Finland ah. um, this past summer. And as, uh, as the, the days were growing, growing closer to uh, when we were going to be going there, I went as part as part of the land sharks Bal baltic oh, cruise yeah. event that that happened and as the time was getting close for us to get there we realized that uh putin and trump were closing down the town of helsinki or the city of helsinki um so we wouldn't be able to the city so we're like oh man what are we going to do so what we ended up doing as a whole group because i was suggesting why don't we just the whole group would go to Porvu for the day and we'll we'll find this geo tour. It'll be amazing. And there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, we could do that. Um, but in the end, what went out was finding uh, Finland's oldest geocache uh, instead. Oh, yeah. so yes. It, it's a hard toss up, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I finished my Jasmine once. So to me, I'm not like a Jasmine lap mm -hmm. collector. So to me, it was like, I'd rather do the geo tour, but you know, you go with the majority. <laughs> Or if you stay an extra day, you could potentially do both Finland's oldest cash and the geo tour. You, you could. Now we were on a cruise, so we we only had so much time. Oh but. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're limited. You would literally miss the boat. I would literally have missed the boat. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, that's cool that you brought that one up because that one is one on my mind that I do want to get back there, not just because of the geo tour, but because I thought Finland was beautiful, as are all those countries, Norway and Sweden and Finland, just a remarkable area to visit. I'm fond of Norway at the moment. Yes, we've, we've picked up on that. Thank you. Well, you know, maybe Jen is different. Maybe she's a little unique. In fact, that, you know, she would go to a location for just a geo tour. Do you know of other geocachers that choose their vacation spots and travel plans on geo tours, Jeff? 
Yeah, I've talked to a lot of folks that have, have planned a vacation around a geo tour or had the vacation plans and then searched out a geo tour, you know, nearby. I know some folks that travel from Florida over to do the one in Homa and had a great time exploring Homa. I had the opportunity to do that one just this past uh, this past month, and it was a ex very interesting geo tour. It took me to a lot of cool places, got to see a lot of great things. So. I use it as a way to plan vacations. I hope other cashers do. And I think it's a great way to explore the new locations, see those hidden gems, see that great little bit of history. Um, just find a place you would not normally go. Now, we have to mention that Homa is the location for GeoCoin Fest 2019, correct? Correct. So that's Louisiana, folks. Is Homa a city or is Homa a county? Home is a city. Okay. And there are actually parishes in Louisiana, so they'd be offended if you called it a county. Oh, oh yes. I did not realize that. There you go. I don't know. It always sounds so fatal to call them a parish. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you know what's funny is it, it didn't even occur to me that spelling of the word parish, and I was thinking like the, the you know, the Catholic. I was yeah. going to say it, it's very Catholic to me because that was my yeah. That's funny. Well, I know that I want to plan a vacation now to Port Vu and apparently now to Homa as well. <laughs> the, the Homa Geo Tour folks are get, gearing up for Geo Coin Fest. They're very excited to host and they want to um, do some fun new things for their Geo Tour. Believe there's a, a fancy new coin planned for next year. So make your travel plans. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go make plans. <laughs> But until then, now, Jen, you mentioned that the ideas for geotours are some organizations or some geocachers themselves. What's Where do the majority of the ideas to create them usually come from? Oh, so let's see. It's Geotours have existed for six years, since 2012. And over that time, you know, um, those of us in the office portion, like Jeff now and me, um, before Jeff started, you know, we are actively talking to um, tourism organizations and uh, park systems and people who work in you know zoos, aquariums, that kind of thing. We will attend trade shows, and so sometimes the ideas for a geo tour come from those people, where they come to us, mm -hmm. and um, they they sometimes need to learn a little more about geocaching. They know that it's a thing that can bring people to their destination, but they might not be, you know, a player with hundreds or thousands of finds. They probably have heard of geocaching in one way or another and know that it draws people. Um, so we get, I don't know, it, it's probably half and half. So half of our geo tours come from that side of the world. And then of course, geocachers will contact us and will give us ideas. They will, um, have heard of the geo tour program and sometimes they know someone in their local chamber of commerce or whatever that may be called in Canada or in Germany. Uh, sometimes they know the local tourism organization. And so as a geocacher, they bring that organization along and those are frequently the highest quality geo tours because, you know, if it's created by a geocacher, all the better. So, Jen, you're saying it's okay for geocachers to present the idea of a geo tour to you? Oh yeah, that would be great. Um, especially the listeners of this show. You know, if someone who's listening thinks that they have a good um, uh, opportunity with a geo tour, you know, they've recognized a location is is good. Um, you know, the instinct of that geocacher is probably correct, and that would make for a really fun location. Uh, a good destination for a couple of days of travel. So we'd love to hear from from cashers, um, especially if you know they happen to know the the local tourism organization. Um, we, well, Jeff and I each have our email addresses, of course. But emailing us to geotours with an S at geocaching.com might be the the easiest way to you know give us the, those ideas, or in the chat room. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Here you go. Uh, hashtag geotours and just give them, start listing your ideas of places you know that would be perfectly suitable for a geotour. Land Monkey's living room. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Oh, his entire property. We've got to make it a tour. Oh, that's true. Uh, you, might have, you might have a proximity issue with the second cache. <laughs> it's, 
All right. Hey, um, so as we're talking about creating geo tours here, this is, you know, the peek behind the curtain here, which I'm, I'm really enjoying this, by the way, Jeff and Jen, thanks so much for um, being willing to come and talk about what actually goes on behind this, because I'm learning a lot and this is a lot of fun. But um, what advantages are there in having a geo tour rather than just creating a geo coin challenge? We've seen a lot of both out there. So I'd say the biggest advantage you get, um, and it's something rather new, is a souvenir. Uh, now by completing a geo tour, finding every cache in that geo tour, uh, you get a souvenir as opposed to just getting a coin, and in some cases you get a coin as well. Um, other big advantages are, you know, one-stop shopping for all your caches. They're listed on one page. There's a um, GPX file that you can download that'll give you all the caches. They're they're grouped together on the mobile app. Um, if you're looking to drive people in your area, um, mm -hmm. you're going to get more marketing. You're going to be listed on our website. They're going to go out in the newsletter. They're going to be on our Facebook page. They're going to be in a blog post. Um, there's going to be Instagram about them. So it's going to be a much, much larger draw, a much larger audience that will participate in that event, geocaching, geotour, as opposed to just a geo trail or a coin challenge. Um, and I've taken a look at some of the numbers and can definitely prove that out, that uh, most coin challenges draw from a local area. And the geo tour draws worldwide. Oh, that's a good comparison. Yeah, we've done several geo coin challenges here and geo tours too. So that's really, really great to hear the comparison. You know, putting any of these things together like this, geo tour, geo coin challenge, oh, podcast, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that I think a lot of people don't realize. Jen mentioned sometimes you even have to educate people of what geocaching is. I don't think a lot of people realize just how long things take. How long would it typically take? I know, say I've come up with an idea for a geo tour and I've contacted you guys from that point until it's live and on the app and people can go out and start enjoying the geo tour. What, what kind of time frame are we talking about? Well, with a geo tour, you have a choice of how many geocaches to hide. You could hide anywhere between five and 150. And that's really what determines how much time it's going to take to prep, right? Like on average, the most geo tours don't go, you know, all out and do 150. Um, most hover between 25 and 40 caches. And so if we decide that that's the one you're making um, and you're already an accomplished geocacher, I don't know. I think that, you know, you'd have to plan a little bit of when you would launch, like what is the right time to launch based on your part of the world and what else is going on there? Is there a fancy event that you want to make sure is happening? Mm. Um, and again, if we're thinking that you're an accomplished geocacher, I would say it's at least a two month prep time because, well, you know what it's like to hide one cache and figure out that location. Yeah. Now you're prepping a set of 40 that are themed and you want to make sure the or the um, descriptions are organized, that you have a logo and that you have the photographs and the marketing materials. Maybe you're creating an Instagram account. You know, those things take a bit of time, which is not the usual task for just hiding a geocache. Yeah. Um, and then for people who are newer to geocaching, you know, they might need either a little more prep time or they might need the help of that experienced geocacher who can teach them a thing or two um, and speed the process up. Yeah, and, and in many cases, you know, we'll have an organization that decides they want to do a geo tour, but they don't launch for many, many months, six months, eight months, because you know, they make the decision, but they don't need to launch right away. They might want to launch on... Easter weekend or on Memorial Day weekend or, you know, some milestone kind of long weekend so that it maximizes the people who would come for the launch event. A geo right. coin fest. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and a lot of them take almost a year to get signed. I just signed one last week that I worked on for almost, you know, 13 months before wow. it finally, finally happened. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes to get these out there. 
Wow. Jen, you brought up a, a great list of people that it takes. I mean, if we're looking to launch a geo tour, what kind of people, what sort of skills are we looking at to build and maintain a geo tour? I mean, we want it to be the best possible geo tour that people are excited to find. The containers are in good shape. And, you know, there's all sorts of design things like, like you mentioned, artists, maybe coins and wow, there's a lot to go there. May, Jeff, what do you think about that? Well, like Jen said, um, having experienced geocachers definitely helps out. Um, cachers that know the area, um, creative hides, you know, we, we struggle with geo tours. You want the hide to be easy to find, but you don't want it to be so easy to find that it gets taken or, or muggled. So you want it to be around there for a while. Um, and sometimes that's half the battle. Um, you know, we, we know geocaching at headquarters. We don't know the area, so we have to rely on the local hosts. They know what they want to show. They know where they want to take you. They know the hidden gems. So it's really a, it's, it's a group, group effort. Um, you know, in some cases, the better geotours are done by a group of geocachers that have found uh, the financing through a CVB or a Chamber of Commerce or a visit, you know, a visit organization, uh, tourism board. You know, that really helps out, um, you know, getting the, getting the caches placed in the right place, making it, making it a good, good geo tour. Excellent. Yeah, I'll add, I'll add a little something to that. You know, it depends on the goal of your program. If your goal is, um, to get people to stay in town for three or four nights, that's, that's a tourism goal. And you would, you would design for that. Um, but if your goal, for example, is to educate people and to make sure that they're learning about the biology and the geology and the history of the area, then that's a different kind of focus and maybe, you know, has, requires different skills. Um, the, it's the fun part. I mean, it's kind of like geocaching. You could design a geocache, just one, um, you know, as a gadget that someone needs two or three hours to figure out on out in the field, or you could design one that teaches you about geology and that's just two different skill sets. Right on. So it sounds like you're saying, if I hear you correctly, Jen, that the best place to start in determining what team to put together mm. to create this geo tour is really decide what your goal of the geo tour is. What is it you're trying to achieve with the geo tour? And then you can think about, pulling the right people together. You can think about like what Jeff was saying about what kinds of caches and where to place them. So start with your goal in mind. That yeah, start with your goal in mind. You know, I'll, I'll pick out one that many of us probably are familiar with, which is the Find Your Park Geo Tour. So that goes across various national parks across the country. Their goal was not, ex not at all to force you to go to all of them and complete all of them. It was more to bring attention to the fact that our National Park Service is 100 years old and we have geocaches or sorry, parks in all of these different parts of the country with geocaching allowed in them. And so, you know, that's another different kind of goal. And they um, helped or they got the help from various park rangers who were experts in each park. So that's a, it's a huge number of people. Um, and then us at, at HQ, we have a little geo tour that's just nine caches that you could complete in probably three hours. Very different kind of thing. Mm. Right on. Um, how many of you guys have completed that HQ geo tour just outside of the office? Yeah. yeah. All but one. Oh. I went on a day the library wasn't open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we need more funding for libraries so it can stay open. There all you time. go. Yeah. So that's the goal of the HQ Geo Tour is to get more funding for libraries. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> GSM times two has done that one. Nice. Um, there you go. Just, oh, hey, Brian Roth's watching tonight. He's in the nice. chat. He says he's done the G the HQ Geo Tour. Nice. Happy to hear that. <laughs> that's good. Uh, that is an excellent Geo Tour. Uh, it's a great example of some of the more creative hides. Yeah. Um, and some, you know, really kind of uh classic type of hides uh, i know you guys have gotten permission to put them in places that i you know i look at and go how did you get it in there 
but um, you know, it's it's a matter of and and it's a good example of getting permission and being able to place a great hide in a great location. So there you go. And Dora Moore in the chat says that she liked the HQ Geo Tour so much she did it twice. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. You just do. can't log it twice anymore, but you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, that's great. Um, so we were talking a little bit earlier about geo coins and souvenirs and such. So, uh, Jen and Jeff, do all geo tours have some sort of reward for completing them? Yeah. Um, well, there's the reward of the geocaching and the locations that you got to enjoy. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and if you found them all, uh, starting in May or June of 2018, you also were awarded a digital souvenir for completing that geo tour and each one is unique. So we were really happy about that development. Um, in some cases, uh, geo tours also have a physical coin that they award you. Um, there have been other geo tours with really interesting prizes based on again, you know, the, who's supporting that geo tour and what their goals were. We had a geo tour in Australia that gave away a very, very expensive watch uh, for some of the like they had a raffle, I think, of the uh, from among the people who completed it within the first month. So that's that's different. Uh, it was not trackable, this watch. It was <laughs> very valuable. Um, we've had a geo tour that gave away an ATV. Um, so, you know, in addition to the finds on your profile and the digital souvenir and maybe a coin, you never know. Yeah, you could get a jacket. You could get, yeah. yes. Didn't you get the jacket from the Utah I, geo tour? I did. I'm wearing it right now. You, you convinced me to wear it tonight. So there, oh. there we go. Look at that life elevated. Very yeah. nice. That's the Utah Geo Tour jacket. Um, so Mrs. Monkey and I each have one from completing that amazing Geo Tour. And you know, that's a perfect that one's a perfect example of what you're talking about, where there are a lot of caches in that Geo Tour, and you gotta dedicate a fair bit of time to doing it, but you get to see the entire state of Utah. And so it's a commitment to it. And you know, sure, I could buy a jacket like this for a lot less than it cost me to do that geo tour, but I would not have the memories of all the locations we visited. I wouldn't have uh, the photos of those beautiful painted uh, ammo cans that they've put out there for their geo tour. So yeah, I think there's, there's a lot more reward. And so you made a good point right off the start, Jen, there's a lot more reward than just the coin. Um, but it is cool to also have the souvenir now, the digital souvenir. Um, you said that all the geo tours, have souvenirs now? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay. I, now, I don't... You have to find all the caches. Mm -hmm. Right. One of them is temporarily disabled. You'd have to wait until it's re-enabled and find that one. Right, right. Well, I found all the ones for the MABR, but I don't have a souvenir for that one. But Oh, maybe well, someone has something against you and they deleted your yeah. finds. Could be. Could be. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to look into that one. I was, I was just looking. Sure, he says he's done them all. <laughs> let yeah. let me let me look in the office tomorrow and i'm sure it's just a little technical glitch and we might know somebody that can take care of that for you yeah. <laughs> well, well in um, that case i've done them all too <laughs> i'm curious with our listeners of, of any of the other listeners who have completed the mabr geo tour if they've uh, if they've gotten the souvenir as well so i don't know because i know there was something funny with the, they changed some of the caches so maybe it doesn't uh -huh. think you found them all because some of them turned into multis and they were traditionals originally. So, yeah, if there's a little bit of um, change in the list of GC codes that are included, that's probably the cause of the glitch. Ah, there you go. So there you but go. We're, so we're happy. We're happy to help any of your listeners who have a question. Uh, again, it's the email address is geotours at geocaching .com. Let us know your your question and you know what your details are, and we're happy to help you. That's awesome. You, you guys, guys are, are so nice. Yeah. Chris, now, why don't you take the next one. Well, other than having somebody like Land Monkey come to your area, what are the key advantages to communities having a geo tour? So I think the, the biggest advantage is going to be that economic revenue that's generated by that geocacher coming to your area. Um, you're going to buy gas, you're going to buy food. Um, if it's long enough, you're going to stay overnight and spend some nights in hotels. And that's the fine line we walk with working with GeoTour hosts is 
I want it to be successful for the cashier. I also want it to be successful for the host. We talk about a win-win-win value at headquarters. It's got to be a win for geocaching. It's got to be a win for the geocacher. It's got to be a win for the host. And I know most geocachers love a geo tour. They could do it a day. But that doesn't really help the hosts out with people staying in an area. So we look at two to three days is that ideal time. Come in on a Friday, cash Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, head home. That's not a bad weekend. You're two nights there, some meals, some gas. Um, that's the biggest advantage is, is getting people in your area. And most folks will come back. Um, they're going to find something about that area they liked. And they're going to say, okay, I got to go back there and explore more of that area. I didn't get enough time there. Um, and that's what we try to do is show people the cool areas throughout the world to go back to. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree with that. Jen, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I can add that, you know, for the people we talk to who are your traditional tourism organizations, they have been advertising their various regions in mm, old fashioned ways. And those are not bad ways, but you know, it's print advertising, it's billboards, maybe it's banner ads and Instagram feeds these days for the ones that are a little more modern. But, you know, reaching out to the geocaching community is a new and good idea that they haven't had before, many of them. And as you guys know, there's a lot of us. There's a lot of geocachers and we love to travel. So that is a, um, a different angle for them. And, you know, Jeff and I explain to those people, like, how do they reach out to the geocachers in a way that would be attractive? Um, so that's an advantage, you know, to communities that are maybe um, more out, outdoor related. They have a lot of environmental beauty, but maybe there's no big stadium that brings in big uh, of athletic competitions. Maybe there, it's not like a big giant city like Boston or New Orleans. You know, um, there's ways to attract people to your outdoor locations with geocaching and this is a great way to bring travelers. Mm -hmm. I think Utah is a good example of that outside yeah. Salt Lake. You know, there's not a lot of big cities that are going to draw that population. So by doing this and by doing the geo tour all over the state, you're going to the different smaller towns. And as you said, buying food, buying gas, yeah, helping out the economy the area. That's yep. the joy, right? Experiencing that location. And it's a great way to suck people out of the larger cities. You know, like mm -hmm. Homer's done with Louisiana and, and New Orleans. They don't need any reason to go to New Orleans. People go there all the time. But Homa, who's heard, who's heard of Homa before the Geo Tour? You know, it gets people outside that and it shows you the bayou. There's some great food out there. Um, and it's another great way to explore an area you might not have gone to when you're just going to New Orleans. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, that's that's a great reason that's some really good reasons to be thinking or advantages to be thinking about having a geo tour um guys we had a question that came in from gsmx2 earlier and he was curious if you could explain a little bit about the cost of creating a geo tour um i imagine you could go down a lot of different avenues with this but maybe just sort of like the 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 core cost if you're thinking okay i just need a high level budget and in, in going into this idea you want to handle that mr Sure. Uh, so yes, there is, I will just uh, state the obvious for people who might not have realized it. There is a cost to a geo tour. It's not just calling us and saying, Hey, we have a group of caches that would be awesome. And the, the budgets are, um, there's three different packages. And I hesitate to say the numbers out in the air because, you know, they have changed over the years. As I mentioned earlier, GeoTours are six years old, and some of our earlier hosts who signed up in year one, like Gold Country, British Columbia, were working with different package prices than um, the, the people who just joined us this year in 2018. And I know you guys record this show. I don't want people to misunderstand it when they listen later on. But uh, Jeff and I are happy to answer those questions offline. Let us know again, geotours at geocaching.com. And, um, you know, it also depends on, uh, again, what are your goals for this geotour? How big is your plan or how, um, 
local is your plan? Is it for a community like North Bonneville in the Columbia River Gorge, which is a smaller region, or is it Visit Utah? That's a totally different marketing and promotion program. And the costs uh, adjust based on how big of a megaphone do you need for us to talk about your destination? That's a great answer. So what I'm hearing you say, Jen and Jeff, is if you're if you're serious about this or, or if you're really thinking about it and you've got an idea and you want to bring it out, contact you guys, geotours at geocaching.com, and you're happy to discuss it. But for for a variety of reasons, it doesn't make sense to just sort of throw a number out on the podcast. Yeah, like like I said earlier, we're in it for a win-win-win situation. Um, and if it's a great opportunity and a great location, we'll figure something out to make it work. Um, that, like I said, like Jen said, it's it's about the package you want, how big a megaphone do you want, where do you want to draw folks from? Uh, are you looking for a local area? Are you looking for nationwide? Are you looking for worldwide? Um, I want it to be a successful geo tour for all parties involved. And that's the goal when it comes down to pricing is make it work for everybody. Fair enough. That's that's great. That's like so many things. It depends. There's a lot of variables in line uh, have, uh, involved there. <clears throat> so there's the hard costs of doing that that we can discuss with you. Know, they can discuss offline. But I'm going to ask you guys to brainstorm just a little bit. Use your creativity, your imagination, your desire. If there was an ideal location to you, in, anywhere in the world, to host a geo tour that maybe doesn't have one yet, where would you pick to put that ideal geo tour? Jeff, how about you? Boy, that, that that's a tough one to answer. Um, I, I I would have to say I'd probably go with Iceland. I've been there once. There's a lot of great things to see there. There's a lot of great geology and geography to explore. Um, I think it would make great earth cache based, you know, geo tour. Um, to be honest, I like to see one in every country around the world and in all 50 state parks. Um, that's a little bit more, you know, the sales guy in me talking. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see that Chris Brew had mentioned in the, you know, the the uh, chat notes about the Puget Sound Energy Park Geo Tour. You know, we'd love to see something like that happen. I think that's a great opportunity. They've got a ton of caches out there, and it'd be a great way to expand the visibility of, you know, all those parks you know, and get people back out exploring the uh, great state of Washington. All right. How about Jen? You got an idea? Dream geo tour? I am dreaming of faraway, exotic, warm places. <laughs> it's Good for this time of year. Many of us are, yes. Right? <laughs> but, but you've got darn tough socks on. Yes. Right. yes. I wish I had flip-flops on on a beach. Oh, okay. Now, I'm, I'm from the Philippines. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if there was a geo tour in this one gorgeous section of the Philippines? It's called El Nido, and it's on the northern tip of this far-flung island. It would be great. Um, is it likely? Frankly, no. Right? Mm -hmm. Like geocaching is is very popular in certain countries. Each of you has certain countries in mind that you know where geocaching has been accepted widely. Um, Yes, there are geocaches in the Philippines, but you know, last I counted, I think I had found like 80% of the caches in that country because hmm. there aren't so many. So a geo tour in the Philippines is a dream, you know, for a different day. Um, you know, it would also be super fun to have a geo tour much closer to home here. Um, it'd be great to have a geo tour in Northern Oregon, for example, that might include the original stash that would be a fun idea you know yeah. there's lots of there's lots of fun destinations around the world um and there's enough flexibility to craft you know a, a theme around it all mm -hmm. in ohio mm -hmm. uh they had a barn uh a centennial barn in each county for our nation's centennial and uh that you know my parents wanted to go see as many as they could so that would be a great little geo tour to get you going out there. They now, also have donuts in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, mm. they do. Boy, they, there's way too many donut shops in Butler <laughs> County. Let me tell you. Whew, I done that, and I think I still gain. I think I still have that extra ten pounds on me. Um, 
we got a question in the chat from Dora Moore. She wanted to know, do geotours have a lifespan? Is there a minimum time they should be available? That's a good question. Um, in my experience, the mm, average, it's hard to really predict with each one, but the average geotour has a lifespan of about three years. I kind of think of it as a shelf life. In three years, the majority of the locals will have found the caches and those who wish to travel to that location have already done so. And then in the cases of the tourism organizations that we work with, you know, they're ready to move on to a new campaign, right? To a new promotional idea. Mm. Um, so that's the average. But as we know with, for example, the gold country geo tour that is in British Columbia, Canada, that's been around for five years. So mm. clearly they're above average and we have several <laughs> like that. We have others that um, are meant to celebrate, for example, a centennial. And so they're made to last for just a year because that's the centennial year. Um, in some cases, those have been so popular that you know they linger beyond that 12 month period, uh, which we consider good news. Um, the minimum lifespan or the minimum commitment for a geo tour is one year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So on a semi-related note, if you have your set of geocaches for your geo tour, what if one of them or two of them for some specific reason has to be disabled, archived, just taken out of the loop? Do you make some accommodations to people that come along and obviously can't do that one geocache so they can still get the souvenir and have completed the geo tour? Yes. So if, so if a geocache has been archived, then that gives them the ability to complete it without that cache. If they're disabled, unfortunately, right now, we do not have any way to handle you know, disabled caches. Um, that, that's just it's part of the way the system is designed. Sure. Um, it's, it's not a perfect system, but we're getting there. I, I unfortunately was not able to complete the North Bonneville Geo Tour because uh, one of the big feet, big foots, <laughs> Yes. was flooded at the time. I mean, oh. I would have had to wade out into, I don't know how deep of water to get them. So I have to go back down there again. You just weren't committed. I, I was going I to go there, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It is for uh, those of you who travel far to a place and one of the caches is just not available. Yeah. I mean, uh, you're talking about an area in Washington state. You know, what if, it was much farther away, like Norway, Belgium, mm. or Norway, or right? the Philippines, yeah, or the Philippines, um, or even in some cases, Oregon is really far away for people. Yeah. Um, so that is that is the game of geocaching, though. And them's the breaks sometimes. Yeah. Um, but for the geo tour host, they do have the flexibility to add new caches. Um, retire ones that need to be retired for whatever reason. So that part is, is actually uh, fairly straightforward as from a technical standpoint. Great. Good stuff. So earlier we talked about if people have ideas for new geo tours, et cetera, that uh, geo tours at geocaching.com is where to send that info, which is great. Um, if cachers have feedback about a particular and existing geo tour and they want to uh, they want to give feedback about that geo tour. Where should they send it? Should they send it to geo tours at geocaching.com? Should they send it to the organizers, the eight to somebody at HQ, which I guess would be geo tours? Uh, do they send it to the reviewers? Like, who should they contact if they have feedback about an existing geo tour? Yeah, we would love to hear from you guys. You know, Jeff and I don't actually get to go to every single geo tour in the world. Um, this podcast is an excellent way to spread that news. I haven't been to all these places in the world. Um, and if you have been there, you know, you, the listener, we'd love to hear how it went, you know, good, bad, um, average. So email us, let us know. Um, if a cash needs maintenance, uh, I encourage you to you do your regular thing and log a needs maintenance note on that cache page because that goes to the host directly instead of like to me in the office and then I e send an email. So that's a slower way to do it. You can do it, but it's slower. Um, if you have positive feedback, you know, favorite points are a great way to quickly deliver that um, to the host. And, you know, we tally these up for each geo tour. So it's, it's, it, 
that's an easy way. You just kind of click the little heart button. Um, and if you have maybe a longer message for the GeoTour host, you, know, you can use Message Center to send them some private feedback if you think that's the appropriate way to send it. Um, or if you're kind of unsure, let me know, let Jeff know, and we can we can hash it out with you. We'd love to hear from you guys because you're the eyes and ears out there. You're actually experiencing it all, and um, we'd love your help. Jen, you mentioned uh, favorite points, and one thing I've noticed when I've looked at geotours, because I've loved doing geotours and I've done a bunch of them, is on the page, it, it does have a favorite points summary or total for the geotour. And, and my assumption is that is a running total of all the caches in that geotour and their cumulative favorite points. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's a very simple arithmetic, adding up all the favorite points from the caches. Okay. Yeah. So is is that a way that you guys look at measuring the success of a geo tour is like what total favorite points are getting is that a metric that you consider Sure sure um that's a measure of success a measure that is easy to to do and to display to the to the public um the the other kind of you know we get requests all the time as you imagine um, one of the requests is, you know, you should take that number and divide it by the number of caches in that geo tour and show me the average. <laughs> yes, okay, someone could code that up. Um, but in the end, you know, a trip, uh, let's see, let me compare two very different geo tours. Um, a, a trip to the Woodbooger geo tour in West Virginia will be a very, very different trip than to um, the one in Sydney, Australia. A, a, a thing like favorite points won't encapsulate the differences between those two trips. So, you know, there's lots of ways to measure a geo tour. That's just one of them. An easy one. Yeah. Makes sense. Absolutely. And wet coaster made a good point in the chat. He said, what if only one or two caches are heavily favorited in a geo tour and the rest have very few Then that methodology of summing and dividing by the total number makes no sense. Right. And, you know, let I me mean, think about the city that you live in. Some parts are just better than others, right? <laughs> so if <laughs> you're not going to have an amazing view at every place in the city or town. Well, in the reality of a geotourist, it's not always about the cash. It's about the location of the cash. Right. You know, yeah. It's about that experience of traveling through that area and seeing the the landscape and the sites and the history and those kind of things. So the cache to me is always kind of you know secondary. Uh, it's something to go find, but it's the reason they took me there was to see something other than finding a container with a logbook. Well, and that's true for most geocaches. The yep. location is better than the actual hide. Yeah. Correct. All right. So um, I think that wraps us up. Um, I think Jen or Jeff, was there any? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. I think it does. I was just uh, looking. I was just thinking out loud and seeing if there was anything else in the chat that we needed to ask, and I don't think there is. I think we covered it all. There you go. See how dependent we become on our chat, chat lackey. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and again, we can do it without the chat lackey. Kind of. We can kind of do it. We we, we can make it look like we know what we're doing. <laughs> I am so happy that you asked us to come on. You know, this is such a, a fun way to get the news out, to kind of um, share our own excitement for this and to educate people and to take some questions. So thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thank you very much. I look forward to all the suggestions from all the listeners on great locations for geotours. I want to keep busy. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we're so bad once, here. Once again, geotours at geocaching.com. Send them your ideas. It never hurts. Is that their motto? Send us your ideas. It never hurts. Well, <laughs> you know what? I may not be the marketing guy that <laughs> but, uh, I think I am. It sounded better in my head. <laughs> Send them your ideas. Period. I love it's to hear from less you. is more. <laughs> earlier in the show, I mentioned this geo tour that I'm working on. That well, we're working on, and I'm super excited about it. I'll I'll send you guys a note when. Uh, I'm allowed to tell you it's, it's a, it's a very interesting location and 
Coming <laughs> through. Coming <laughs> well, Jen, the beauty of it is it's actually going to be a pair of geotours. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Teasers, teasers. That's oh. right. Two so I'll have to bring you both back on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and to that. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Sorry. I'm looking forward to it already. Yeah, absolutely. So to that end, of course, uh, a standing invite, uh, Jen and Jeff, yes. uh, just feel free to reach out to us at any point in time. If you've got some news you want to share or you want to try and schedule schedule yourself into the show, um, I'm happy to work with you and get that mm -hmm. to happen. Cool. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, it's great talking with you. You know what? We're not done talking about GeoTours because our next few weeks are loaded with GeoTour stuff. Next week, that's two days after Christmas. Do you realize we're already upon Christmas? Time to go out and go shopping. It's time to start shopping. <laughs> uh, December 27th, we're going to talk about the Olympic Geo Tour with OP Tourism, the Olympic Peninsula. And then the week after is a winter WSGA update with MC3 Cats. Oh, looking forward to that one. And as you mentioned, we're into January then. That takes us back to, well... Another geo tour, geo tour, one of which was mentioned tonight a couple of times. That's Gold Country up in BC. I've done a few of those, just barely scratched the surface. It's a great geo tour. Looking forward to that one as well. It is absolutely. Uh, and we're so excited to talk with the organizers of uh, those two geo tours. And of course, the president of the WSGA. We've got lots of other great topics and shows lined up as we get into the new year, folks. So, you know, just keep listening. We hope you. Uh, have had fun listening to us. And I, I want to take a moment to thank Landsharks, our corporate Denali level sponsor, Landsharks.ca, the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online, go in person, visit their store in Victoria, BC, open six days a week, except holidays, and they ship online orders daily. We also want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters. That's Bounce Bounce, Team Squirrel Limax, and worldcaching.com. If you want to know more about supporting this show, go on over and click that Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. And all of you guys who support us every week, well, you support us every month so that we can do a show every week. We thank you so much for that support. It means a lot to us. And, you know, Christmas time is a time where we think about what we're thankful for. So it's Thanksgiving, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so to everybody, thank you so much for your support throughout the year. That goes out to... Broncos Fan for Life, Sprouter Camp Clan, Tick Magnet, Kev MacD, Subway Mark Dormore, Dune Buddy, Kid Vegas 19, Geo Nav Pros, Wino Seattle, Acredoc, Billy Robson, Genies, and Teus, Keats 94, Trexer Zero, MC3 Cats, Kennel Barb, and our newest patron, M Nerve. All right. Nerve. Nerve. I, I don't know how to say that. Nerve. Hmm. M Nerve. Well, I'm sure if it's not correct, you'll hear. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, we're grateful to all of them and we're grateful to Jen and Jeff for joining us tonight. Until next week, people want to reach out and get in touch with us. Let's, let's uh, extend to our guests. You guys have mentioned geotours at geocation.com multiple times for information about geotours. But if there's a way that you would like somebody to reach out, if they want to get in touch with you individually, do you want to list that or is a geotours email satisfactory? People can go to geocaching.com slash travel. That's uh, another way. There's a video there. There's some information. And of course, you can click to contact us, you know, uh, privately. Okay. Yeah. And Land Monkey, how could people reach you between now and next Thursday? Well, you know, you can always find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope at Land Monkey GC. On Facebook, we've got the Team Land Monkey profile there. But, uh, you know, I always encourage people to check out the YouTube channel. That's L-A-N-M-O-N-K-E-Y, Land Monkey on YouTube. That's right. You'll find find us there. We've got all kinds of videos. We just finished season one of Geocaching Adventures, which is what I alluded to earlier, was we traveled from Iceland through Norway, Sweden, uh, Russia, Estonia, just an amazing adventure. We had uh, lots of fun videos. You get to see history and culture. Well, you know, as much culture as you're going to get from me and lots of geocaching. So um, definitely check out those YouTube videos. I, I guarantee it will be an enjoyable time for you. And if it's not, then you have a different perspective than I do. And that's unfortunate <laughs> for you. What's end, my friend? 
How about you? I don't go to nearly as many interesting places, but I do on occasion make it over to Victoria, BC. And that was a whole lot of fun. But you can reach out and get in touch with me on Twitter, Facebook, or right there in the geocaching message center. I'm just wit's end. Chris of the Northwest. Well, you know, we do take cruises. As Witsen said, it's only to Victoria and not quite uh, uh, as far as Land Monkey does. And I've watched the videos and I just become more bitter that I don't travel as much as he does. <laughs> so if you want to find anything more about me, head on over to anything with Caching and W. It could be Twitter, Facebook. Look for Caching in the Northwest on Instagram. Better yet, head on over to cachingnw.com slash host. Find all those links because we know you're driving in the car and you can't take the moment to pull out a paper and pencil and write something down. You end up writing on the steering wheel and honking the horn and getting people mad at you. Head on over to cachingnw.com slash house. All right. And while you're honking at the person in front of you, we want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Caching in the Northwest. You can be part of the show. Give us a call, 6253-693-TFTC, and leave us a comment. Ask us a question. Read us your own glow. Offer to pick up our Geo Tour coin for us anytime, day or night. <laughs> of course, you can also email. That's feedback at cachingnw.com. And, you know, as we mentioned, your support helps to keep quality shows coming. If you like the show, would you trot over to cachingnw.com and click that Patreon link? You can also subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or any of your favorite podcasting applications. This show is produced by Chris Umfrenauer and Jay Kennedy and hosted by Chris Jay and Jim Paulwitz. This show is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license, copyright 2018 by Chris Umfrenauer. Now hang out and chat with us in the after show. There it is. I'm getting, dramatic pause. I'm getting really slow in my old age or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I was waiting for a different set of words to come out for the, ah. here. the after show. That that better for you? So let me let me start off the after show by saying T T Jen said wood boogers. <laughs> <laughs> and that just takes us at the correct tone for the rest of the after show. <laughs> I'm happy to give you that moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I laughed. I giggled. <laughs> yeah, that's a, an interesting name of an of an area to live. Where are you from? No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dora Moore had a hashtag fatas earlier in the show. She said, "I think there were more out of towners than locals at the Victoria event." I I, I don't know. There were. There were a lot of people. I was there were. Really surprised at the turnout there. That was awesome. There were a lot of I Canadians. Had, there were a lot of Canadians. Yeah. Yes. And a good number of uh, Americans that made the, the scamper over the water there. Yeah. Absolutely. Over oh, the river and through the woods. Jen had to drop out, so it was great to have her there. Jeff, uh, if, you, if you need to go, feel free to go anytime. Okay. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. <laughs> Um, and uh, somebody said in the notes that uh, land monkey or the land sharks will stay open if you're willing to do a live recording on a Sunday. <laughs> so I don't know if that's extended to everybody. Who <laughs> yeah, you have to double that check event. on that. But yeah, yeah. But yes, it was awesome to have that event on the Sunday at their store. Um, went really well. Um, it was interesting. I had some some feedback. There was a couple of people who were kind of wondering. Uh, first I had the question, what, there's no after show. So <laughs> that was interesting. Um, the after show was live in the store. Yeah. The yes. whole episode was an after show really. Yeah. But that was, um, that was fun. And uh, I think some people were kind of wondering if we were going to have like loudspeakers set up and be able to actually, um, and, and do the podcast that way. But we kind of thought we would go a little more low key. Um, those who wanted to listen in could, you know, stand kind of closer to us and listen mm -hmm. in and, and participate. A number of folks came up and uh, had some chat with us on the mics, which was great. Um, we didn't want to, we didn't want to like take over the whole event for an hour and make it like um, all about us. Yeah, make it all about us. Make it like a a a, a production, right? In that sense. You know, I had thought about bringing over a speaker for just that purpose, so that you know. And I thought, but you know what? It's an event. People want to talk and want to connect. And if we did something like that, you know, with a, a speaker and made it loud enough that you couldn't 
really talk over it. Um, I, I don't think people would have had as much fun. Yeah, I mean, that was our perspective on it. You know, if you disagree, then we're more than happy to hear from you. Let us know. But uh, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, it was great to talk with the variety of people we got a chance to talk to. And it was, a, as uh, MC3Cat says, it was a very Chris-centric show. It was. And not just me. There were four Chris's or mm -hmm. some variation of the name Chris, Christopher, Christina, Kristen yep. in the room. So, um, yeah, uh, that, that just made it a great event for me. There you go. That was a lot of fun. Cool, cool. Um, there was a question, hashtag Fatas. Has anyone tried out the Garmin? GS map 66 S yet wondering how it compares to the 64 S I don't know. I just use my Etrex 30 X. I don't need to use anything else. Uh, I have not tried it yet. Um, I, from what I understand, it has the same chipset as the 64 S. So the GPS reception shouldn't be any different but I don't know. Um, it may, well, maybe it uses a different chipset and it allows you to get into GLONASS and they do. Oh, the Chinese, yeah, the Chinese one. Um, every time you say that, I'm like, what the heck is that? And then it, yeah, it's like, Oh yeah, that's yeah. what it is. But, um, so I don't know. Let me put it that way. I don't know. Um, I haven't done it. I don't know if anybody has. So MC three cats says a sixty six has a weather function. Ooh, uh, that's the uh, could be handy. Yeah, I think that's the extreme weather. No, no, it uses FM radios, I believe, to get weather reports. Hmm. Oh, so. one of the NOAA weather bands. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. So. Right. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Mr. Hippo who is asking that question. He says, uh, Christmas is coming and Mrs. Hippo has been shopping. <laughs> awesome. Yes, um, I'm going to start shopping here in a couple of days. Yeah. The day after Christmas? Actually, my wife's birthday is two days after Christmas. Oh, perfect. So I do all her birthday shopping the day after Christmas. Because I, I tell her, I go, it's not that I'm putting things off. I can get you more for the same amount of money. There you go. And there's never been an argument. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about, not about how much you spend. It's about how much you save. Oh, you are so American. <laughs> <laughs> I saved $1,000. Yes, but you spent $10,000. But I saved 10%. Uh, speaking of of spending and uh and geocaching i i have to say that i did uh indulge in the uh the geo box or the cash box i think mm -hmm. they called it that they had uh, the limited time offer that popped up just before christmas time mm -hmm. um so I, I treated myself to a christmas present uh, i'm not going to spoil everything that's in the box because it is supposed to be a surprise but one of the things that was it come already sorry has it come already it arrived today Ooh. And uh, one of the things that was in the box was, I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the company Mir, M-I-I-R. They, um, mm -hmm. they make beverage containers um, mostly. So they have uh, in the box is a, a, a double wall vacuum sealed mug that has a, it has, I don't have the, the lid on right now, but it has a vacuum sealed lid that goes on top. Or not a vacuum seal, but a sealed lid that goes mm -hmm. on top. And, uh, you know, of course, it's got the geocaching on one side and the, a little uh, neat little picture here the, the yeah, caches yeah. are calling um so i used this mug I, I field tested it today filled it with uh with hot water out of the kettle went for a 45 minute walk out in the cold uh, and the wind when i got back after 45 minutes uh, it was still hot the liquids inside so and boy howdy was there wind <laughs> oh man there was wind absolutely so there you go boy howdy yeah Boy, howdy. No um, problem with that? Nope. It's better than Soapy Boy. Just... That's right. <laughs> Not as good as Wood Booger, but... No, no, no. no. Few things are. <laughs> All right. Booger. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, MC3Cats also wanted us to talk about the boat ride over to mm. Victoria. That was the boat ride. Now, Wits End 
Dream Painter and I went over Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Went, we drove up to uh, Port Angeles. Uh, drive was easy and smooth. I think I, I, I stayed awake the whole time. I was driving, by the way. <laughs> Lest you get oh, yeah. confused with him saying driving and sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, the passage over was, uh, was a little rough. Now, nobody got seasick that I saw, but um, as we were sitting in the, in the main deck there, we'd look out across to the other side and watch the windows. And we'd go from all sky to all sea and all sky and all sea. So you were all, all seeing. seeing. Yes. It was the and all seeing eye, all seeing sky. All seeing sky. Yeah. So yeah, the boat, uh, the boat was rocking. Now on the way back that evening, when we took the four o'clock ferry, oh, I mean, going over on Sunday, I thought, how can the Black Ball Ferry make this profitable? This doesn't look like enough people to make the sailing worthwhile. Um, they made up for it. Oh boy, on the way back, that that boat was full, and the it was much much smoother. In fact, I was steady. Yeah, I fell asleep. I was going to say, I, I think it was steady because I slept most of the way back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah, the 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 Black Ball Ferry, I thought, was very nice. Uh, it had everything you needed. It was only a 90-minute ride. Um, so I was impressed. I, I would do it again. In fact, I would love to go to Victoria again. We need more time there. Yeah. To, to explore Victoria, get more caches, obviously. But um, yeah, it, it, Victoria was an absolutely beautiful city. Great. Well, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed your time there. That was a lot of fun. And we got to see the land monkeys. Aw. And the land sharks. And the land in sharks. their new store. That was great. Great store, by the way. They were it great is. hosts, great store. It was just a wonderful time. Yeah. It was. Um, you know, that's actually a very good location if you wanted to do something like we did, because there are two rooms. So we could have people in one room chatting, and we could do the podcast in the other room. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it was good. It was a lot of fun. You're, you're, you're grinning, Chris. You've got something you want to say? Do I? I don't know. You just had a little uh, smirk on your face. MC3 Cat says, uh, you know, we found caches there with, uh, shall we say, contraband in them. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I, I remember hearing that story. If you want to hear that story, you're going to have to find Chris of the Northwest or MC3 Cat somewhere and get them to regale you with That's that story. Right. Very cool. Um, yeah, no, it was a great time. We had a fantastic trip over ourselves. We got up and did that uh, that new geo tour, the MABR geo tour. Um, looking forward to seeing if I'll get a souvenir for it now. So that's cool. <laughs> somebody said there wasn't one. I think it was uh, Jamie, Mr. Hippo, who said there wasn't one. Uh, no, I think it was somebody else. But okay. there, uh, it was probably uh, there's other folks confirming that um, uh, that we did not uh, that they also did not get that. And I, I I'm wondering if it is uh, what we were suggesting there during the show in that because they had changed at the last minute uh, just before they published, they had changed up some of the the mm-hmm. caches that the the coding on the back end still was assuming that you were going to find what was originally there so because you hadn't found them all you hadn't completed the geo tour and get gotten the souvenir mm-hmm. so it's great though right i mean that uh, jen and jeff are going to take that feedback and, and go take a look and sort it out and so there may be something coding in the back end they need to get somebody else at hq to do i don't know i'm, I'm now into, into the world of speculation about how that's <laughs> fixed but um, but they're incredibly responsive, Jen yeah. and Jeff, and and they want to make geo tours the best possible experience for everyone involved. So, I mean, that's what I came away with tonight is like, you know, hey, we want more, we want better, yeah, and and that's something that the community helps with. It's not just oh, hey, as a uh, a town or a. Uh, um, I can't come up with the other word I'm thinking of a group of businesses. Um, we want to do this. There you go. Commerce. Um, we want to, we want a geo tour to bring people in. It's actually more than that. And I was glad to hear that tonight. Yeah. I learned a lot. Um, that mm-hmm. was a great, um, a great area of discussion that, uh, Jen and Jeff were able to go into. 
So yeah, it was a highly informative, uh, great episode. I think so. And uh, I that congratulatory pat on our backs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking in the chat. I don't see any more. So, folks, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Come on back next week. And until then, make sure you get out and get caching in the Northwest.